Hey everyone, welcome to my solo charge build in Diablo 4 Season 3. This is my favorite build of all time, I'm really excited to show it off. Uh, I thought it was going to be lacking in single target damage, but as you can see, it does not. One of the key benefits you get from this build is speed, so I'm going to show it clearing a T89 vault. The core gameplay loop is basically using charge on cooldown, uh, and whenever you charge into like a pack of enemies, it's going to instantly reset that charge cooldown. Partly that's baked into charge, but also we're using the Bear Clan Berserkers aspect. What that does is whenever you kill an enemy, it's got a chance of refreshing this buff, which reduces the cooldown of all your brawling skills, in this case, uh, charge. You're also going to see that we're running all three shouts once again. Is it meta? Not necessarily. Why we're running them is different from basically all of the past leagues. Uh, instead of having them as perma uptime, what they actually serve to do is reset our charge cooldown if we whiff. So they're more quality of life than anything. Um, if you feel guilty about running them, you can 100% do this build without it. Uh, there are just going to be times where your charge is on cooldown when you could be able to set it off using Marshall. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. The other two abilities that we're using are Lunging Strike and Call of the Ancients. Call of the Ancients is just a way to get Fury at the start of fights as well as just a pure damage buff. And Lunging Strike is just an easy way to move around as a basic attack, but also it serves as a purpose for swapping weapons if you want to add any of the weapon swapping aspects. But yeah, as you can see, super fast builds. Uh, we got to this end room in about a minute. Um, at this point, you're going to want to have like 25 or so Zoltan's Wardens. Um, I start every dungeon with 30, uh, and then by the end here, you know, you get to 25, and then you kind of... This room's kind of a mess, so... I'll drop 5 or 10 stacks. As long as you end with 15 or more, you can open every chest uh, and you're going to be good to go. There are a few different layouts at the end for this room. This one's not my favorite, uh, but we get through it with all of our stacks intact. If you haven't run vaults since the changes they made, you're going to see why you're going to be one of running them. Uh, obviously, tons of loot. You also get to upgrade a glyph. Uh, so basically, to me, they're better versions of Nightmare Dungeons right now. Really enjoy running them uh, and would recommend everybody trying them out. I'm now going to move on to the actual build guide in the Paragon board. Uh, I'm going to link to them below. Uh, if you have a chance, like, subscribe. I'm going to be doing World of Warcraft and Diablo 4 content moving into the future. I've been really enjoying it, so any support helps. Thanks. The first thing I want to highlight is how we get charge cooldown as low as possible. We're going to be taking the power charge upgrade for it, which reduces the cooldown anytime you hit an enemy, uh, up to 9 seconds, as well as 6 seconds odd bosses. This mostly does it, but you're going to need a little bit more cooldown reduction, and where you can get that is from plus ranks of charge. You can find that on pants, as well as on your neck piece, so charge and brawling. You're also going to want cooldown reduction, uh, one of which we can get from the necklace, but also from the tusk helm. Uh, this is one of the only two uniques that you need for this build, part of why I love it so much. The final piece of the puzzle is the bear clan berserkers aspect. This kind of fills in any cracks. If you don't have the perfect gear yet, uh, it'll lower the charge cooldown by a ton. Um, and you'll be good to go. One of the things I do want to highlight is that power charge requires you to hit enemies. So what happens if you miss? Um, well, that's where the shout package comes in. In Season 3, they changed how the martial glyph works. Anytime you use a shout skill, it reduces the cooldown of non-shout skills by 4 seconds. So how you can use that to your advantage is basically anytime you miss, or if you're fighting a boss like Lilith, uh, you can charge and then immediately use one of the shouts to reset the cooldown. Charge again, use another shout, etc. The final item that I want to highlight is my favorite item of all time, Magnum Opus. It increases the damage of a skill using this weapon by a set amount based on your fury. So the goal of this build is also to max fury. I'm currently at 216, but you can get even higher, and there's an elixir that actually gives you 50 as well. One of the stretch goals for this could be the Uber Amulet Melted Heart of Selig. Uh, it increases your maximum resource by 60, which is insane, as well as turning it into a defensive measure. Um, if you do that build, uh, it's going to require some amount of resource generation. I haven't quite figured it out yet, so if I eventually get it, I might make a new video on that. Uh, the end here, you're going to watch me kill Uber Lilith. Um, this was actually pretty fun. I thought I wasn't going to have the damage, but I had forgotten that in Season 2 they nerfed Lilith's health, so you don't need a crazy amount of damage anymore. Um, the difficulty of the fight comes from the fact that all of your abilities basically one-shot you. Um, but this was a great way to round out the start of Season 3. I know a lot of people are, were looking down on it initially. Uh, the patch that they pushed out right before this weekend uh, was fantastic. Totally changed the game. I uh, hope you guys are all having a great time, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.